to get an ISBN for your self-published book is a rather simple process, but it can be somewhat overwhelming for newbie authors and sometimes some established authors. What are some of the things that we need to be aware of? And what are some of the things that we should probably not be doing? I'm going to talk about that in today's podcast, episode 113, where the heck of the time gone. Stay tuned. What's happening is Dale here, and I'm just tickled to death. You took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about my favorite thing in self-publishing books. Before we do get into today's podcast recording, I think it's important to pay the bills. And this is a good thing because I don't want you tuning out. Listen, listen, if you're a self-published author, you have to pay attention, all right? It's the law. I'll call the cops. No, totally kidding. I won't call the cops. I'm not a snitch. <laughs> today's podcast is sponsored by the fine folks over at winningwriters.com and the seventh annual North Street Book Prize competition. You can enter for a chance to win up to $5,000 in cash and prizes. And here's the really cool thing. If you don't win that $5,000, first place for one of six categories will get $1,000 in cash and prizes. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of money, a lot of prizes. I'm looking forward to that. It's good for all self-published authors, regardless of the date they published their book. If you did it today or you published it 10 years ago, it don't matter. They'll take it. Keep in mind that it is also recommended by Ally, the Alliance of Independent Authors. I'm a big fanboy of Ally. You've heard me talk about it numerous times, but if you haven't, just know they're a nonprofit organization run by authors for authors that are looking out for your best interests. And speaking of an Ally endorsement, Winning Writers, the company that hosts the seventh annual North Street Book Prize, actually has an excellent rating as a partner with Ally. What if it's not a good fit? Hey, look, there's a new feature to the contest. The judge will recategorize your book into the right category should you choose the wrong one. And if it's not a good fit at all, they'll just go ahead and refund altogether. The deadline is June 30th of 2021. Don't have a fear of missing out. Go get yourself submitted over there at winningwriters.com slash dale21. Again, that's winningwriters.com slash dale21. All right, let's get into it. What? is an ISBN. I know we're starting this at the very basics. I think Vince Lombardi said, this is a football, when he is ready to just break things down. Because I wanna make sure everybody is on the same page when I'm communicating this one. So don't just skip forward in the podcast because it's important we lay the foundation here. An ISBN is an international standard book number. It's essentially a universal number for cataloging books. Now it's not just for say you, the publisher, but it's also for those that want to sell your title. That ISBN really helps to where your book's going to be recognized across all stores, not just in the United States, but in throughout the whole world. Pretty cool, right? So the thing is though, this is where it gets a little bit sketchy. And I think some people get so confused about this. When you get an ISBN, that number, is for one-time use only. Now you probably think that makes sense, that's cool. It's good for only one iteration. To be very clear, this means if you get an ISBN for your ebook, it will be only for that ebook, not the print book version, not the audiobook version. It's just for that iteration. Also speaking along that lines, if you think about this, you do a hardcover and a paperback. Here's the thing. Even though it might have the same content, the product skew is different. So this means that it needs a unique ISBN for both the hardcover and for the paperback because they're two separate versions all together. Makes sense? Hopefully you're following along here with me. So ISBNs are good for all publications. This includes the print books, could be paperback, it can be hardcover, it could be spiral bound, whatever you want to do on this one. And it also is good for ebooks and audiobooks. Let's just pause for a second. And that goes so fast. You're probably saying, but I heard I don't need to have an ISBN for my ebook. That's true. In some self publishing platforms like Kindle Direct Publishing, otherwise known as KDP, they 
will allow you to publish your ebook without a single ISBN on it. But here's the thing, it's they're gonna assign you their product placement, which is essentially called an ASIN. And the ASIN is their own little version of an ISBN, but on their platform. Now, is that a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. But if you plan to publish elsewhere off of Amazon, it might be a good idea for you to get one ISBN for your ebook that you can use everywhere. Now, you probably heard me say, you can use your ISBN on one title iteration. Does that mean if I go and publish my book on KDP, and then I go ahead and I publish it through draft to digital do I need to have a different ISBN for that ebook? No, you can use that same ISBN across all platforms. Same thing goes for audiobooks as well. So you can be able to utilize that. Do you need it? Not necessarily. So people like to find folks over at Find Away Voices. You don't need the audiobook ISBN. However, it is a nice to have because again, you as a publisher can be able to track that ISBN of that book and distributors can be able to track the sales of that one. Okay. Who should buy ISBNs? Now you notice you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. Wait, dude. What about these free ISBNs? And I promise you, we're gonna get to those free ISBNs in just a second. But let's just say you're gonna buy your ISBN. And in most instances, ISBNs will cost. They're not free. You can't just get a hold of them, but there are exceptions to the rule. Who should buy ISBNs? Established authors. And unless you need peace of mind. There are some authors that are brand new to the business and they overwhelm themselves with a lot of moving parts. And I get it. Maybe you say, you know what? I really wanna have an ISBN. I don't wanna come back and redo it later on. If for some reason it starts to take off, I wanna have it to where it has my imprint on it. That's fine. If it lets you sleep better at night, then go ahead and get an ISBN. But if you're a new author and you haven't published a single thing yet, I consider it a nice to have, not a necessity. Where should authors get ISBNs? Okay, so I can give you an answer for a couple of regions, but the rest of them, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to give you a vague answer. So in the US, there is a monopoly over ISBN distribution. It's through a company called Balker and it's spelled B-O-W-K-E-R. And this means that they are the only registering body for ISBNs in the United States. If you go elsewhere, it's a completely different game in and itself. We'll, we'll get to that in just a second here. In the UK, it's Nielsen over there. So what about elsewhere? Well, the folks up there over in Canada um, actually get it for free getting an ISBN for free. Now, there are some small hoops you have to jump through, but nonetheless, if you're a Canadian resident and you have a Canadian-based business, you should be able to get an ISBN free of cost. So that's not bad. What I would recommend, based on the region in which you are living or running your business, that you're gonna need to research the regional ISBN registration agency or service and do your due diligence. Make sure that it's not just a third-party seller, and I'm gonna tell you why and just couple minutes here, but you're going to want to make sure that you get the ISBN. And when you get an ISBN, you will be allowed to put your business entity there or your doing business as name over top of that. So as a, for instance, the imprint on my ISBNs is One Jacked Monkey LLC. That is the name of the company in which I run and publish books through. So I've got that on my imprint. If you go and use a free assigned ISBN through Amazon, it'll have Amazon as the owner of the imprint. Now, does the owner of the imprint control the copyright for the book? No. Whoever owns the ISBN just owns the ISBN. That's it. Should something run south or you need to change and such like that, you will need to get a new ISBN and release a second edition. Okay, so do your research based on your region. So as a, for instance, if you happen to be watching or listening to me over in Romania, you're just gonna type up Romanian ISBN registration. 
and try to do a little bit of digging. Make sure that you own the ISBN outright, which by the way, Romania, I think was like $35 per ISBN. It might've been, it's way cheaper than what it is here in the United States. And speaking of cost, uh, well, how many should you order? How many should you realistically order? Depends on how much you plan on publishing. My thought is if you're gonna end up slapping an ISBN on one book, you should just do the, all, all the books. Just get all of them done. You can order in bulk on the US and UK. Typically here in the US for Bowker, it's about a thousand ISBNs for $1,500. Okay, that's a steep asking price. That's about a buck 50 per. So it's really not that bad. It just, you take a hit at first. If you're in the UK though, a thousand ISBNs is gonna run you about 949 pounds. Okay, reasonable, not bad, again, cheaper price per. You compare that though, if you were to purchase just one, one ISBN in the US is $125. Let me go ahead and repeat that. Let's just let's review that. When you bought it at a thousand, you got it about a buck 50 per. If you get it one, it's 125. Yeah, that's me side looking over a bulker. I see what you're doing there. And then you go over to Nielsen in the UK, one code costs 89 pounds. What? So it's a pretty penny. Again, both those companies have a monopoly over ISBNs in the US and UK respectively. So we just gotta kinda run with that. So who should you avoid? Who should you avoid purchasing ISBNs from? I would say avoid third-party sellers. I, I, I don't see any exception to this rule. Honestly, there are third-party sellers out there that will sell you a certain amount of ISBNs, but herein lies the problem is the fact that when they purchase those from the governing body, the registration service, that makes it their imprint immediately. So let's say you're like, but hang on, we can reassign the ISBNs and I'm glad you brought that up. Here's what Balker says. ISBNs cannot be transferred on an individual basis. If a self-publisher wants to be identified as the publisher, the self-publisher must get their own ISBN. A printing company or publisher services company cannot sell, give away, or transfer one of their ISBNs to a customer. So this is Balker coming straight out and telling you, no, if you go get it from a third-party seller, guess what? That's fine but you're gonna have them as your imprint. Now, some would make the argument that it's better to have some random third-party seller's imprint on there versus say Amazon, because it greatly increases the likelihood of you getting placement in brick and mortar stores. But honestly, I don't see there be any, any value in getting some random third-party seller's name on your imprint. Like I don't see that as being a benefit especially if you plan on being in this business for the long term and really functioning as a publishing house of sorts. So how does the registration process work? It's a simple form that you can first start out, take about five minutes to whip together, like literally five minutes. It's a one page, you fill out all the information, including like the page count, the title, the subtitle, the author name, things like that. And then there's an advanced form, which I did. And it took uh, roughly 30 minutes. I'm sure after doing it a few times, it'll probably be somewhat easier, but you just fill it out. And it literally can be registered within a few minutes and sometimes a few days. It just depends on the processing over on their end of things. But what about the free ISBNs? We talked about that, we put a pin into it. So let's come on back over here. Free ISBNs work just fine. If you're a new author, honestly, don't feel ashamed to use that. In fact, I know many successful self-published authors who have never bought an ISBN. In fact, up till more recently, I didn't really buy any ISBNs because I didn't see the purpose. It wasn't taking away from my bottom line. It wasn't anything that was directly affecting my business in an adverse way. So what's the issue? What's the problem? Well, Free isn't always free. And I'm going to say in quotations here. When you get a free ISBN, say through Amazon, or maybe you get a free ISBN when you published Ingram Spark in the US, that ISBN is their property. 
you can't take it with you. Meaning that if you get the free assigned ISBN through Amazon KDP, you can't take that ISBN and use it elsewhere. Because it essentially is this, I always give my cookware analogy. If you come on over to my house, you're welcome to go ahead and use my pots and pans if you wanna make yourself some lunch. Or you can bring your own pots and pans and make something neat. But here's the deal, if you use my pots and pans, you cannot leave my house with my pots and pans. It just don't work out that way. I'm not that generous of a person. Fact, by the way. Uh, so just be aware that using these free ISBNs have, has that limitation. And there's one other limitation as well. And again, this is industry insiders. I heard this over Ingram Spark at a conference a number of years ago in Dayton to where they said that most indie bookstores are unwilling to stock a book on the shelf if it has an imprint with Amazon's name on it. I don't know if this is fact. I can't be able to tell you for sure, but I will tell you this, that my, book, uh, my, my good buddy, Keith Wheeler, was actually able to get an Amazon imprinted book into a indie bookstore. How do you do it? Came friends with the staff, chatting them up, built a relationship. And then after a while, I was like, well, we can go ahead and consign your book. Let's bring it on in here. We'll sell it for you. That's pretty cool. So know that it's not all lost if for some reason you have to rely on free assigned ISBNs. It's totally fine. Just know that when you use the ISBN, it's only for that platform. So if you plan on publishing wide, chances are very likely you're going to get a different free assigned ISBN on a different platform because it's going to be different elsewhere. Hey, I got a couple final notes here that I want to share with you. But before we do jump into things of that nature, I want, of course, give a big shout out and a thank you to our sponsors at the North Street Book Prize. The deadline's June 30th, 2021. Visit winningwriters.com slash dale21 and let them know that I sent you. Get it on in there. June 30th is right around the corner here. My final thoughts. When it comes to getting an ISBN, do it if you can afford it. Do it if you can afford it. Now, if for some reason you absolutely must have your ISBN, just know that it's probably going to take some time for you to either come up with the money or save the money. So build it into your whole business plan of investing in that. Do I think that you need it? No, because here's the reality of the situation. It's self-publishing. So in the event that later on down the line, that ISBN you're like, you know what? I want to have my own. You can go ahead and delist that first edition and then publish a new edition, a second edition with your ISBN and your imprint. So take a breath, deep breath and just relax and just know that you can always adjust later on. I would highly recommend you buy in bulk. You get the bigger discounts in the US and UK. Various other regions, I don't know what it's going to be because there's so many regions, to be honest with you, that some of them are free and some of them are cheap and just find out, buy in bulk because you're going to probably need to have an ISBN for each one of your publication iterations from ebook, audiobook to print books. And if you have various forms of print books, including paperback or hardcover, then you're going to need to have even more ISBNs. Stuff adds up after a while. You might as well just buy it in bulk so you can save yourself some time, energy, and heartache. And of course, money. Research your regional ISBN registration agency. Literally, this is what I'm going to tell you what to do. Google it. I know it's not sexy. and It's not probably the best advice you're going to get from somebody that is considered a self-publishing advocate, but it's what I do. I literally just Google up the answer for that. And maybe even speak to other authors that are in your region and maybe they can give you some recommendations. So as we start to wrap things up, do me a huge favor. Could you subscribe or follow me on your preferred podcasting platform and leave a review like Alex Strath One over on Apple Podcast. Title is An Honest Man, five stars. Dale gives it to you straight from being real about the Amazon bestseller title being a farce to all other things self-publishing. He's real, authentic, and very helpful. So any event here, folks, I really appreciate those type of reviews. Alex, thank you so much. That made my day. If you can do me a huge favor, do that as well. And if you happen to be watching me over on the YouTube podcast, yeah, that's right. We record this on YouTube every Monday, the year or the year before, the week before we launch it on the audio podcast. Come on over and join me at dailinks.com slash YouTube 
podcast. Subscribe today and drop me a comment if you've already subscribed. And by the way, we also have channel memberships. More details about that when you go and visit that link, dalelinks.com slash YouTube podcast. All the links are inside the description and show notes for today. Next week is going to be a fun little journey into copywriting your manuscript. Should you be copywriting or putting a copyright on your book before it's self-published? Well, I'll talk about that next week's podcast. So make sure that you stay tuned. Until later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I'll chat with you then.